Have you ever seen those streaming and recording setups with multiple PCs, a ton of monitors, just generally a bunch of things happening at once? Things being recorded, re-recorded, re-encoded, sent out, streamed, simultaneously recorded three separate times, and you're thinking to yourself, mate, I can't do any of this stuff. I have a mid-range PC that's becoming quite old now. You can record on the lowest of lows. Streaming, well, that requires an X264 encoder. But recording, you can go really, really low. The following footage that you're seeing is actually being recorded off of a Core 2 Duo E6400 that's two cores running at 2.1 GHz with a HD2600 Pro that is roughly almost twice as slow as the GT430. The question is, how are we getting decent footage out of it? Well, here's the secret. I'm actually using MPEG-1 video. We could go lower with MJPEG and that gives us maybe like a 5% performance improvement. However, the compression is absolutely awful and it will result in gargantuan file sizes for any high definition video. X264's compression is 4 times as good as MPEG-1's. That means that on average your file size will be about 4 times the size that it should be, which means that your bitrate should be 4 times the size that it should be on X264. That means with a bitrate of 12 megabits per second, our video quality actually ends up looking pretty good at 720p30. If you have an Intel 4000 series processor or newer, then X264 Ultrafast is about as fast as it can really get, because X264 has been updated to support the new instruction sets and newer processors, so on older processors who lack those instruction sets that could really accelerate how fast it can encode stuff, it has to use older instructions, which are a lot slower. And so, I was forced to use older codecs on machines like this one, and some other ones. If you want to record, and you want a no fuss recording, use the hardware encoder if you have one, and regardless of whatever people say, please just use OBS and set the video quality to, like, CRF22 or CQP22, and you should have a clean looking recording. If you're having performance issues with the hardware encoder, increase the hardware encoder speed, if you're having issues with the X264 encoder, which you should only really use if you know what you're doing or don't have a hardware encoder, then boost it up to like ultra fast or whatever if you need to. It's gonna have some minor quality loss, but it's mostly a compression thing. Here it is. The main PC has a 5600X, 32GB of RAM and an RX 590. The second PC has an Intel i5, 4670, 16GB of RAM and no dedicated GPU. That's it. I have a PS4 up there in the corner. You saw it once in that drive clip video. The kind of recording that I can do with it is 1080p60 on the faster preset CQP22 or the balanced preset on the AMD X264 encoder. What if you have an Intel Core i5 or 670? Uh, surprisingly enough, another processor that I have. Now, you could, like, I would use if I was coming into situations where my CPU was being fully used, I would switch to a hardware encoder, and uh, on the Intel one, you can use it. However, on the Intel PC that I have, I wanted to test out X264 because my hardware encoder runs up at the iGPU and that PC is meant to be a server PC which lacks a proper, you know, it doesn't have a proper graphics card. It has a terrible one that's integrated into the chip and while the encoder is decent, the actual performance is not. So using the actual hardware encoder will lower the performance of a GPU by a very, very slight amount. However, you're only gonna notice that if you're running an iGPU and even then, in this situation, I use hardware and I could hit roughly up to 45 to 50 percent CPU usage with X264 ultra fast at 1080p 60. However, obviously, I suggest if you're playing some stuff and you want to use the software encoder, just do 720p 60 or 1080p 30. You're saving yourself a lot of CPU cycles, and uh, you're probably gonna lag out your PC anyways if you try to not do that, so yeah. However, let's say you, you have a PC that is the lowest of the low. This is the Pentium G860, with two cores running at 3 GHz. It also had an AMD HD7450, which was pretty much also a really bad graphics card on the level of the other computer, which we will get into soon. The recording was captured in 720p at 60fps, and the quality was decent, with the CPU being stressed out to 30%.
the Core 2 Duo was uh, using a 720p 30 recording that stressed the CPU out to 40%, while looking also really decent, especially for the hardware it's running on. So, why do people then have terrible looking recordings on computers that should be able to handle decent looking ones? You see, a lot of the problems a lot of people had with all the computers and recording stuff was that they were using codecs that were simply too new for their hardware and their hardware just couldn't handle it. If they simply used an older encoders that could run on their hardware, yeah, the file sizes would have been a little bit larger, but they could have still captured perfectly watchable footage. Now, here's footage from a YouTube channel whose name will be listed here, and their footage was running at 480p 15 due to the usage of the X264 codec. However, if they actually used the MPEG-1 encoder, they could have easily reached 720p30 and maybe even 720p60. Now, let's look at some tests that I've done from before and let's see how the recordings in these particular systems would have looked. Here we have an early Pentium D system, only really thrown in to show you that you can record stuff on really bottom of the barrel stuff. This was back when I was trying to figure out how stuff worked on the lowest of low system, and I'm pretty sure I was just using X264 at an ultra low resolution. This is a test that I've done on my mobile phone of a PlayStation Portable game because I wanted to see how it could look. It looks okay. Here's a recording on a random HP mini PC, which has a Core i3 at 3.4GHz 4th gen, and although it has the 4th gen integrated graphics, these graphics are a lot slower than the ones in my system at home, and therefore the video performance was drastically lower, and only 720p60 footage could be captured. Here's an old Fujitsu Slim PC running a Core 2 Duo E7300 with two cores and two threads, and a chipset GPU that was horribly, horribly slow. It was so slow, in fact, that increasing the bitrate too far would ruin the performance of the encoder because the tiny graphics chip was so horribly overstrained. Here's some more footage from the Sandy Bridge Pentium system, just so you can see how it could look in its full glory, since this footage actually came out really well, even though the bitrate was set too low. And that's about it. I'll see you next time when we do some more fun stuff, maybe test some stuff. We'll see. Maybe it's just gonna be more video games, most likely more video games. See you then. Goodbye.